predominator and predominated. Um, this is a concept that uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada talked about uh, in reference to Radha and Krishna. He called them predominator and predominated moieties, which means basically two halves of one whole. So in the first three yugas, um, Satya, Treta, and Dwarpa yugas, uh, worship of Bhagavan, just Bhagavan, Vishnu, um, was primary. And the devotee, or uh, Radharani, wasn't so much known about. And uh, Bhagavan fulfills the role of the predominator. He's the supreme controller, Ishvara. And although Bhagavan is the complete reality, the, the absolute truth, um, the absolute truth is only one half because the Supreme Lord is lording over reality, lording over all of the living entities. So without those he's lording over, then the Lord is not having position. So you need to have both the Lord and those he's lording over, the devotees. Um, but Krishna tells us about his dominant position in Bhagavad Gita. He says, Aham sarvasya prabhavo mata sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante mam bhura bhava samanvitaha. I am Krishna, the sweet absolute, the origin of all, the entire universe of the material and transcendental play, activity, purpose, and the Vedas and allied scriptures which give guidance all evolve from me alone. Realizing this hidden treasure, persons of fine theistic intelligence surpass the mundane and embrace the path of love divine ragamarg and adore me forever. So this is translation from Srila Bhakti Rakshakshira Maharaj's Bhagavad Gita. And Krishna is also telling us about his dominant position uh, in chapter 18. Sarva dharmam, uh, sarva dharmam pritya mame kam sharanam vraja aham tvam sarva papebhyo moksha syami masucha. Give up all kinds of religion and surrender to me alone. I will liberate you from all sins. Do not despair. So that's at the end of Bhagavad Gita. So Krishna tells us we must surrender to him. Um, but then what do we do in that surrender? And that's where uh, the teachings of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu pick up. Krishna comes back um, to our world, material world in Kali Yuga as the golden Lord, as the hidden avatar. And his teachings are how we actually act in surrender. Krishna tells us to surrender. He shows us his dominant position. He has so many beautiful leelas. Um, he's showing right, how he's here to kill the demons or he's, he's always showing us how to uh, recognize his divine uh, dominance. And he's also showing that in the other avatars, he's having so many nice pastimes. But then he comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to show the pastimes of the devotee. And that was not shown before in the other yugas, but in Kali Yuga, it was shown. So coming back to the predominator and predominated, we know that Krishna is the predominator. Bhagavan Sri Krishna is the Supreme Lord. But being a lord has no meaning without those who are being lorded over, as I was saying before. A controller has no purpose without those who are being controlled, the predominated. So this is showing uh, this concept um, that Chipad Puri Maharaj um, related to that yin-yang symbol you see there. How it, it has a similar representation. You see in the light, there's a little dark. In the dark, there's a little light. And that's the balance of the whole the organic whole. So uh, Sripad Puri Maharaj also made this relation about uh, positive one and negative one. Positive one and negative one are opposites, but their absolute value is one. Positive one has absolute value of one and negative one has absolute value of one. So when we're seeing things in just um, a mundane sense, we're seeing things as opposite, as thesis and antithesis. But when we're seeing things from absolute perspective, then we're seeing their synthesis. This is something Srila 
Sridhar Maharaj uh, talks about in his beautiful books, such as Subjective Evolution of Consciousness. So thus the predominator and predominated are inseparable parts of one complete whole. If one is there, the other must also be there. The complete worship of the organic whole, the absolute truth, must include this conception. And this was the gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are, um, are displayed throughout uh, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita and Sh Chaitanya Bhagavat by Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami and Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur. And this shloka um, is something that uh, I believe Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was saying during one of his ecstatic dances in front of Lord Jagannath during a Ratha Yatra. Um, he says, Gopi Bartu Padakama Layur Dasa Dasa Nudasa. We are the servants of the servants of the servant of the cowherd boy of Vrindavan, who is the protector, prestige, and everything of the gopis. That Krishna is our enjoyer, and all our service is meant to supply enjoyment to him. So again, before Kali Yuga, the importance of the devotee was not worshipped so much. It was just the predominator. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to show us in the most fallen age, the highest conception of worship also came. So again, we're seeing those opposites. We're seeing in the most fallen age, the negative, then the positive is coming, the highest form of worship. And the synthesis is showing through devotion how we can live in the most fallen age, but transcend it through the mercy of the devotees, through the mercy of Guru, Sadhguru, Guru, and Vaishnav. <clears throat> so Mahaprabhu taught the worship of the devotee as the absolute. This was never conceived before. He was as much Radha as he was Krishna, both predominated and predominator. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came as a devotee. He wanted to taste that supreme transcendental ecstasy, which Srimati Radharani experienced through her inconceivable love for him. And so this picture, uh, I think is very nice. Um, a, a comment that Srila Janardhan Maharaj made about Sripad Puri Maharaj's discussion was that uh, in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela, we can see Lord Jagannath as a predominator having the dominant position and then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to show predominated uh, as the devotee and I think this picture you know shows something of that so another point that uh, Sripad Puri Maharaj made was um, it's very interesting that uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu the time that he came what was happening around the world um, around the same time that Mahaprabhu came in India, uh, which was during the 15th and 16th century, uh, he, he manifested in the material world for our benefit uh, between the years 1486 and 1534, although he was never in the material world, of course, but he appeared that way to fallen souls such as myself. Um, at this point in time in the Western world, they were experiencing the Renaissance, which some uh, consider being from the 14th to the 17th century. This marked the end of the Middle Ages and ushered in a modern approach to art, science, religion, philosophy, and more. So while Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was here um, showing a revolution of devotion in India and also, you know, bringing Buddhists and Muslims to this con pure conception of love of God, in the Western world, they were also experiencing some kind of renaissance, some kind of evolution of consciousness. And uh, it's just interesting to consider how Mahaprabhu's will and, uh, you know, he's, he's Bhagavan, so of course. So there's no mundane Bhagavan is controlling the entire world, the entire universe, all the universes, you know, the spiritual world, everything. Um, but it, it's interesting for us to observe how 
perhaps his influence also spread into the West from our limited perspective as, as limited uh, living entities. So this, uh, similarly, how Mahaprabhu shifted the focus from the predominator to include the predominated worship of Bhagavan, uh, must worship the devotee. The Renaissance also started to consider the role of man. They were moving away from uh, a church-centric um, perspective and more into the, the cognition of the individual person uh, as a part of God's supremacy. So um, this is just showing some of the prominent figures in the Western Renaissance, Rene Descartes and Immanuel Kant. And you can see how their lives were just pretty shortly after Mahaprabhu's pastimes uh, occurred, even though they're always occurring. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, please forgive my inability to uh, <laughs> represent what Sripad Puri Maharaj has said, or, you know, there's many mistakes I have made and um, I'm hoping that by the Vaishnav's grace, my uh, offense will be forgiven. Uh, thank you. We thank very much. I'm also uh, paying my full dandavat to my Diksha Guru, Srila Bhakti Namalachari Maharaj. So we thank Simon Krishna Kesa Prabhu. Very nice presentation that uh, Sipad Puri Maharaj spoke about predominating and predominated, supremely predominating and predominated moieties. So uh, we would now open it for discussion. If there are any questions or any comments, anybody wants to ask to Simon Krishna Kesava Prabhu. Um, Dhanavad Pranams, thank you for your nice lecture. And um, yeah, I was wondering if, if you could say a little bit more because you are student of philosophy, I heard that I saw in your last, uh, your last um, the, uh, slide, Dia, uh, that you said something about Kant and who else? Uh, Anthony Descartes, Descartes, Rene Descartes. Yes. Can you say something about what what is your thinking about them and in what way it relates to Mahaprabhu? Yes. Or uh, so, my dandavat to you, Yashesh Puri Devi Dasti. Um, yeah, so. I'm, again, I have no thought of my own about this. I have no idea about those people at all, except for what I heard from Shripad Puri Maharaj. Um, but I can, so from that, I can say something small because I've been working on a paper from my class about those two specifically, uh, more Descartes. So what Descartes uh, brought to the Western world was uh, dualism. Uh, what he called substance dualism. Um, substance meaning the underlying substance of reality. Substance meaning God. Uh, he thought, Rene Descartes thought that substance, God, then manifested as two distinct new substances called extension and cognition and that they were isolated from each other. Not that they had any interaction, but that extension, which means matter that's extended in space, meaning our body, anything that you see extended in space, any kind of physical object would be extended substance. And then cognitive substance would be any kind of mental or cognitive uh, thing, an idea. And so, Descartes thought that these were two completely separate things. And the repercussions of that have led to modern science only considering physical. And they don't consider mind. And 
so they're completely shut off from any subtle, any kind of subtle phenomena and the higher development of those subtle phenomena, which is spirit and, you know, approaching God's, mm, God's hand in the physical world. So through trying to shine a light on Descartes' mistake, which is very influential in modern science, then hopefully we can try to uh, get modern science to consider things that they are not considering, such as life coming from life. Right now, modern science thinks because they are so focused on extension, only matter extended in space and the relationship between different extended objects, and they don't look at the mental at all, they think that all life comes from that matter, that everything is coming from these objects in space. Everything comes from extended substance. So they're not even able to recognize the, the role of life, right? That we are alive. The scientist is alive. It's a living being who came from another life, right? If they can't conceive of God, they at least have to admit that they came from a mother and a father. Otherwise, you know, that's just unfortunate for them if they can't even admit that. So they, they, they come from a life. And Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada is saying, okay, and then life, 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 what's the first life? Krishna. So that's the ultimate goal. Uh, life comes from life. Life is Krishna. You came from Krishna. But the first step is recognizing that at least all life comes from another life that is a mother and a father. Because they can't even admit that. They're saying that all life comes from matter. So one of the one of the approaches to try to correct this is to show the mistake that Descartes made by making cognitive substance and extended sub substance completely separate. We have to be able to see how they interact. And a very simple way to see how they interact is that when we pick up our hand, we have to think about it first. It's not just our hand is like doing some random stuff. Like we have to think about it. The matter, the body is extended and it's acting in certain ways because we're thinking about it and then we're doing it. And it seems like almost too simple to like think about how they are making that mistake, but it's just like very inconceivable. But they are making that mistake and they're not able to see the hand of God. They're not able to see Krishna. So this is, uh, this is about Descartes and then Immanuel Kant, Kant, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know so much about Kant. I can't say something very nicely, but I know uh, Shripad Chanta Maharaj and Shripad Muni Maharaj could say much, much more about this than I can. Uh, but I hope that's okay. Yes, thank you. Yes, very nice. <laughs> very nice explanation, Krishna Kesha Prabhu. Is there any other questions anybody have or comments? To someone Krishna Kesha Prabhu, anybody wants to ask? So, um, Krishna Kesav Prabhu, uh, I want to ask you a question that uh, how Lord can be uh, found defeated by somebody because Lord is known as Ajita. Right? Ajita means who cannot be defeated. But uh, here he seems to be, as you are explaining, he came as predominated. So how he assumes that position, what happens? So um, the Lord is defeated by the pure love of his devotee because the Lord is fulfilling all desires of all even conditioned souls. But those devotees that have pure love for him, the gopis, the, the love that the gopis have for him, Srimati Radharani, that love is so pure that he cannot fulfill any of their desires because they won't accept it. Very simple. They just won't accept it. Krishna can give them anything, but they won't accept it. So then he's defeated because he's rendered powerless through love. <laughs> Very nice. Sila Siddhar Maharaj told that, you know, the Lord is attracted to that, what he don't have, right? Uh, so when he sees that a devotee is, uh, is so much completely you know uh, being you know predominated and yet 
the devotee is you know getting something that is you know making him go on with that position with a mood of you know releasing so he is thinking i am in a dominating position i what i am not getting and the my energy is getting how can i experience that so this is you know something very sweet i also was thinking how nursing they felt you know even prallad maharaj when he was so sweetly and you know very affectionately embracing nursing them like a father nothing father then nursing them thinking what is this love that prallad has even i don't have because i came from pillar is my like my parents i cannot have this type of thing how can i experience this thing then you know he came nursing they came uh, uh, you know later incarnation all he came with parents huh? he accepted parents like you say bhaman dev and porshuram ram all other you know the incarnations they came with parents you know to experience that what prahlad is experiencing also and here we see as mahaprabhu says how radharani is in you know, her devotion is influencing even krishna the supreme personality that he wants to uh, give up that position as a supreme personality and wants to come as supremely dominated uh, being <laughs> so sweet huh? so transcendental inconceivable that uh, negative attracts the positive <laughs> yes thank you maharaj thank you prabhu very nice you have given very nice I talk I appreciate it very much if there are are there any questions if there are no questions 